How are you doing, Orphos? I'm doing really well. This was a game both of us had. We neither of us have played it actually, right? We neither of us played it before. We have played yeah, the second neither, one. Yeah, neither of us have played this one, but we played Silent Hill 2 first a couple of years ago now. Yeah. And uh, decided to give this one a shot to see what it was like, and I didn't think it was going to be that good. I thought, well, like not bad, but I didn't think it was going to be. You know, Silent Hill 2 is just like such a amazing classic of a video game. The game's never going to be as good as this. And while I don't think it necessarily was as good as Silent Hill 2, I still think it was pretty tremendous. Absolutely, I completely concur. Like, it almost felt like it didn't have the right to be that good. Just because it's been it's been so long, I expected, you know, the horror aspects of to hold up because Silent Hill 2 held up. But I didn't expect, like, the moment-to-moment gameplay and, and the controls to, to be as good as they were. Like, it was completely playable. Yeah. And I was completely engrossed from the get-go. So many great moments from the game. Like as soon as you get go, um, the story beat is hitting these unsettling moments almost immediately. And like where, but even before the like, sort of dream screen cruise, or at least when you wake up uh, meet Sybil, like you have this jaunty camera angle, and you've got like these you know blood strewn on the floor. You see these monsters, so you're already primed, right? It's already priming you. And then I think as well like that that static that you get there from the uh, radio totally primes you for danger. And I think that's quite cool and like an indicative of a good like technique for like making you scared because then you, you're learning fear basically school uh you know the monsters are great but we're pretty much in the silent hill bread and butter now we're in this enclosed environment very yeah. claustrophobic it, it's uh challenging to evade the monsters lighting is spooky music and music is spooky like this is silent hill firing on all cylinders and that's not to say that that when you're outside exploring uh the world the overworld of silent hill uh, isn't scary but there is, a, it does feel like there's two different, almost like tones, like the outside feels a bit, not relaxed, but it feels like you can take a little bit of a breather. You've got yeah. more wide open spaces to avoid people. Yeah. And like, you generally have a good sense of where you're supposed to be going. Yeah. Whereas once you're inside, you know, it's like constantly checking your map, uh, trying to check in every room, trying to find the puzzles and the pieces that will help you advance through this creepy ass school. And then, of course, once you finally hear the air raid siren. And then you move into the distorted version of the, of the school and see, like, how it just changes into this rusty, industrial, messed up place as... You know, bodies are hanging from walls and the art pieces are turned to become like even more sinister. Yeah. This is this is this is where this is where Silent Hill got really. This is when you know, ah Yeah. They had yeah, they had, this, they, is what they, we get they had this all for. figured out from the first game. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Daddy Where are you? Cheryl what you're saying about I mean outside being like that kind of space of breather and I think that's true I think Silent Hill does that quite well and gives you spaces to, to have a breathers um, between like the, the terror moments but I always think it's really funny because when we were playing I kept saying this I kept I would kept saying different things like oh but the outside isn't very scary like it's a good space to kind of relax and just kind of run through and then every time I would make a comment like that we would enter that space and something scary would happen. Like I think there's a moment on the stream where I, I mentioned that the outdoors is a fairly relaxed space. We step outside and it's flipped and it's become the upside down. Yeah. Or I say something like, oh, the game doesn't have like super creepy elements. And then all of a sudden some weird message comes on the TV screen and starts crackling at me. And I'm, I'm, I was hoping it would get a bit scarier. Sure. I mean, that's kind of scary. No, this is pretty scary. Every time I say something, the game just like delivers. <laughs> yeah. 
It does, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, and so the game just kept beating me back. Every time I kept trying to say like it was, it kept failing on something. It was like, hang on a minute, I have one more thing for you, uh, and kept proving me wrong. Before we recorded this podcast, we actually ended up watching a movie, Jacob's Ladder. I, I want I want to bring it up now. I, I want to bring it up now, uh, largely because you can see the in like the, you can see the parallels between a uh, Silent Hill and Jacob's Ladder. One of the things that was most apparent to me with Jacob's Ladder is how. The, like the like the look of Jacob's Ladder and Silent Hill is just like so one to one. Like the way that lighting is done in Silent Hill, mm -hmm. and how it's done in Jacob's Ladder. Like in Jacob's Ladder, it's like all the lighting's coming from outside. It's very like God rays coming through the windows, and then at night it's all very dark and oppressive and foggy and you know gray skies. Even even when you're outside in the morning, it's just like gray skies. There's never really any sun in the movie. And it's the same in Silent Hill. It's actually kind of funny the, the, the seeing such a how like how obvious the inspiration of Jacob's Ladder was on the game, but the game still manages, which I don't think a lot of games do when they look towards movies for inspirations. Is that Silent Hill still feels like it, it is able to make a twist on it mm. that makes it like it's able to make it its own. To where you can watch uh, you can watch Jacob's Ladder and you can play Silent Hill and like they're just completely different uh, experiences. Yeah, it, it absolutely. doesn't feel like a ripoff. But as you say, like just how everything's set, the use of sound, um, especially the use of this like uh, ambiguous journey that you, the character is taking in, into these different worlds, as it were. Um, you don't know the path isn't linear. You don't know when things are happening. You don't know. Um, uh, who are good, who's good, bad, uh, and you don't know like where necessarily they are. And I think the what, a theme that's in both is that you know the reflection of the two worlds also has this kind of like precipice between life and death that it's always exploring. Mm -hmm. uh, especially in like Silent Hill One, where they've got the Alyssa's character who's kind of sus uh, suspended, as it were, between life and death as she's like becomes this vessel for this um, occult. And then you have the balance between the two worlds. And as you say as well, like the, the short, sort of violence that's in both um, Jacob's Ladder and Silent Hill, at least shown in like the disparity in the two, the two worlds, all manifestations and the idea of trauma, which mm -hmm. really cool. I think they executed really well. I think it's really, really interesting. Members of the Silent Hill's, you know, town are always odd. The things they say are offbeat. They don't necessarily make a purely coherent, and it almost sounds like your character saying one thing and they're saying another, which is much more evident in Silent Hill Two, but mm -hmm. is a bit in Silent Hill One. I think I, I think you're right about everyone being off kilter, and even Sybil is a bit off kilter because it feels like she isn't perceiving the town the same way we are. And she's very happy to just wander off by herself, and and then you meet up with her again, and it's like nothing has really happened it always feels very uh very bizarre i think one of the things we talk we should talk about like one of the things this game does um very well very important for i think set, uh, setting up the feeling of the town and all that is the way the game works its camera uh, through the entirety of the game is fucking phenomenal it's impeccable like it's yeah, amazing i've got this written all of my notes and it's the things that i'm it's the thing that i'm practically wanting to like scream every time i think about silent hill I, from the start of the podcast i just want to go like, i want to talk about the cameras i want to talk about the cameras yeah. like just straight away when you first enter the town right there's that scene when you start seeing bodies and then you go down this alleyway and you get this jointy reversal of the camera that is so cinematic in its use like it, it, it's like a telltale sign of that transition piece where you move from like uh, the known to the unknown that you see in like you know something like the shining for instance uh, and it's so brilliant I and mean, that type of camera use gets brought up a few times in the game not necessarily in the exact same way but this kind of uh, as we, we, say, we use this word off kilter because I think it's really the best best way to describe it because it's 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 like 
close to normal but not normal and it yeah. always unbalances you unsettles you gives you weird perspectives makes things look bigger than they are or smaller than they are things darker than they should be and all that these kind of variety of different things like that which i think is so so cool it's like uh cinema ta- it's, it's like cinema storytelling 101 like in the sense that you're using these camera angles to kind of incite uh, unsettlement in person and i think they do it really well in this game and it's something we don't see in a lot of games generally at all actually mm. there are probably a handful of games that i can think of that i go away thinking like wow they use the camera to real effect here yeah uh, absolutely i think the thing that's very noteworthy and i think this actually also helps it in creating this degree of unsettlement is the fact that these camera shifts, especially the one at the beginning, right? The one, the one where you're walking under these pipes, and you know the camera's kind of moving up over the top, and it's like uh, it's it's just a nice, smooth, beautiful transition that just feels mm. like very weird. I think I think why it works so well is also because in a lot of other games, it would be the game takes control of the character and walks the character down the alley, yeah. and it's just a cutscene, and the camera moves it with it. Whereas yeah. you control, like as you push forward, things are becoming are unbalanced and strange. And there are a couple of like really, really good camera angles. The, 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 the one that sticks with me the most is towards the uh, end of the game, where you end up walking across a bridge. Yeah. And the camera end up, ends up going behind the character's head. And is actually, like as he takes his steps, it's bobbing a little bit. Yeah with the like because it's just locked onto the back of his head and as you turn it's the character's head turns and then the camera begins to turn with it as if it's like like a pole sticking out of his back or something yeah yeah it like turns so cool it's really cool i think the one that sticks to me is when we go up those stairs and then you get that downward look of the spiral stairs as you kind of wind your way up it oh which is really another really cool effect um, a lot of like transitional pieces with the camera work I think um, that like kind of like taking you from stage to stage or from mm-hmm. uh, like a, a, you know maybe a safe moment to a bad moment or a bad moment to a, to a safe moment things like that are really really cool and I think it's what sets aside Silent Hill in my opinion from other survival horrors I mean, as you as you said with the with the camera earlier, it is used largely in transitional pieces. Uh, a lot of times, when it, it seems to be when you transition from the, the normal quote unquote world to the distorted world, do these camera angles begin to kick in? And so it also helps kind of reinforce a bit of dread when it starts to get fancy because you've been getting comfortable. You've been comfortable with how things are. You know, just running around this, uh, running around the city or the location has been fine. Then all of a sudden, it starts to do something funky with the camera, and you're just like, "Oh no, this is cool, but this is going to be bad." Yeah, yeah. One of the probably one of the biggest staples. I think one of the things that everyone knows. You know, one of the the fun facts of Silent Hill that everyone knows by this point is, of course, the fog. We we could um, sit there and talk about like its representation and what you know what theme it invokes. However that mm-hmm. the reason there is fog is due to the graphical limitations of the PS1. It's like it's a solution to not being able to have a very long draw distance uh, on the PS1. Which is such a it was just such a smart, ingenious solution to a problem like that that I just love it. That you're able to take the limitations, come up with a solution and work that back into the game to where it makes sense. Yeah. It's not, it's, absolutely it's not, it makes sense. Yeah. The, the funny thing is, though, and this is what I found kind of, I don't know if, if odd's the right word, but when you're outside at night, there isn't really any any fog. You can right. actually see the edge of the world. Yes, that's as true. The game, so as, I'm as trying to think of the in. night elements. I mean, I know, especially when you switch into the industrial world, the 
fog disappears. So when you're outside, when that's happening, you do see that cutoff, which is a shame. I feel like they should have added something in place of it, but perhaps it, was, it felt too, maybe they thought it was going to be too samey or something. You know, there's something to be said about the fog being a, there's a fight between whether this town is going to stay the normal town or if it's going to be like go toward this hellscape and like it's almost like a purgatory or a transition right exactly exactly and and like during the sort of normal times there's always this constant uh obscure obscuration of uh uh, like what's happening, actually happening in the town, right? Because like, there's this, uh, you know, the cult that working behind the scenes. Nobody really knows what's going on. So the fog kind of represents that, that idea that people people don't know what's happening, right? They're always yeah. being blinded. Um, so when it comes to the industrial side, which is the kind of unveiling of all the weird shit, uh, the fog isn't there. The low res nature of Silent Hill works in its favor everything not quite like everything looking a bit rough around the edges just helps with this alien kind of how everything feels a bit odd just helps the game like it's one probably one of the few ps1 games where it's low resness can really helps it in being a horror game it all it all just it all works it's like it's it's an amazingly designed uh game even with uh, the limitations they had on the ps1 like there was a lot of there was a lot of care there's a lot of care put into this game uh, absolutely feel, which is funny considering team silent were basically the outcast failures that you know konami didn't really believe in anymore just thought they were you know a bit of a loser and yet they come out and probably do one of the Konami's most successful game, like outside of uh, Metal Gear Solid or something, you know? So uh, while we're on graphics, uh, I sure. mean, if you've got something to mention, go ahead. But I want to no, bring no, 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 no. up uh, the monster character models. Sure. Yeah, so I'm not actually that big of a fan of them. That If I'm oh, going really? to be negative for a second, I not graphically, as you say, I think the graphics lends itself, you know, the, ja the jauntiness lends itself to this game. But... I just think they could do more with the monsters. I, I can see, you know, a lot of them are very uh, animalistic, mm -hmm. uh, and you know that looks like it comes straight from from Jacob's Ladder. Like a lot of the creatures and demons in there were animalistic, they were maggot-like, and they were coming through the walls and all this kind of stuff that we see. And actually, I think you see on going through all the Silent Hills, at least up to Silent Hill, for the room we saw a lot of weird monsters like that. And I like the rep that they're the representations of trauma. That's great. And I really think that's really interesting that they, they pulled out for this kid. Uh, but I don't find any particular aspects of them too, I don't know, too unsettling, too unfrightening. I mean, the nurses are scary, sure. But like the dogs, eh, as far as horror dogs have gone, not that into it. Those werewolf things, eh, those flying things, eh. Sure. Um, you know, even the lizard things and the cockroaches, I'm just, I'm just not feeling them. They became a lot more like just harassers, which is the standard technique. You've got to have your harasser monster, but there was, so, it felt like there was a lot of harassing monsters and not more of the, the, the more I really just don't want to be over there because of them. Because in Silent Hill 2, I remember like not wanting to be in areas because I knew there was a, a type of a, a monster there. However, having said in that, I will balance it with the fact that I know they're supposed to represent the fears of a child. Um, while we know Elisa had a particularly abusive time, so the monsters there, like the nurses and stuff, are very scary. For Cheryl, the dogs and flying monsters are more typical of her ch ch childlike fears. So I'll take that. Fair enough. But I kind of was hoping for something a bit more. Let's just say violent, but maybe more grotesque. So just something, something more that would certainly put me off wanting to be anywhere near them. Because then the cockroaches just weren't enough for me. I do think you're right. I think the dogs and the flying monsters are not very interesting. They seem I, a bit comical. Like Right? Yeah, I, I feel like the most interesting monsters in the game are the ones that aren't really antagonists, like the ghost babies or the bodies they have hanging on the walls yes. and stuff. Oh, like the tentacle arms. Yeah, uh, like um, that stuff is, is more memorable to me, whereas the other stuff is just... A bit just background. 
Yeah, exactly. nice. And, and the bosses as well, I think, were... I mean, the last boss, okay, a bit more interesting. But generally, the bosses felt a bit uninspired, to be honest. There was the, well, the, the split, mouth, split mouth, which was the first thing. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, split mouth, like, dog thing. Yeah. That was pretty cool. I quite the, that was cool. The, 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 actually, that design was cool, but the fight was boring. It's also very, like, once you knew, like, how... It's yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, you, you shoot, you shoot, a, shoot the thing in the mouth, and that's it, you've won. It's, like, yeah. so weird how, how just nothing, because, because like, I remember, I mean, to be fair, it, the alternative, which you know, took us a while before someone in chat helped us. Yeah, because we were stupid. Because we played the first half of the game previous stream and forgot about uh, a book that we read that basically tells us how to kill the monster. Yeah, and so we were, or well, I was running around in circles again and again and again and again, and nothing was really happening. And like, I mean, that's not very, it's not very interesting. So I mean, yeah, you're right. Yeah, they didn't it's have a cool variety design, of but, attacks, but the boss fights were fun. Yeah, like the the worm as well and the moth, which is kind of uninteresting. I like that they were you know representing you know, metamorphosis uh, and you know these various things again like fear and trauma from the kid, but uh, like just their you know their tactics and patterns and attacks just weren't that interesting. And I think for me the most annoying one was fighting civil. That was really really tedious and boring fight. I thought mm -hmm. um, it went on for too long. Uh, yes. The boss battle, though the final boss, that I'm okay with. You know what? Yeah, I'm I'm okay. I'm okay with how that turned out, and I'm actually find that boss more interesting, especially if we had got the other ending. That manifestation of boss would look quite cool, I think. The soundtrack and the sound designer or sound director is Akira Yamaoka, who requested to join the development team after the original musician for Silent Hill had actually left. I mean, first off, the music is fucking awesome. The soundscape is uh, incredible. It's, it's able to evoke so much with such harsh sounds you know metal clanging or static or uh or like almost like uh, like like clock tower sounds you know like gears grinding yeah absolutely like everything that, is feels very mechanical yeah um, and yeah, it does so much to unsettle you because they're very jarring sounds they're very low frequency sounds that constantly invoke that sort of rumbling and a sense of anxiety into you because it's like a it's very drony and then you know peppered with these like very odd sudden sounds that kind of make, make you kind of feel real like really like oh, harsh right it's harsh to hear and then as well like those very sudden sounds right you know you have like you press a button or you do an action and then all of a sudden there's very sudden sudden sounds um, which just scare the shit out of you they may be only evident in certain rooms or certain for seconds um, little knocks, little things like that, um, which just really surprised me. And they just come at really uncomfortable moments, and they're really great, really, 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 really great. Right, actually, you know, make me really unsettled. Uh, which is funny as well, because there's several times that we both thought some of these sounds were happening inside our own house. That's right. Oh man, what was it like? The knock on the door? Or yeah, something? yeah, yeah. Or like so a knock knocks, on the wall. Like, sounded like it came it, coming from behind me, or something. Yeah, I was like, where is that? that? Scared the shit out of me. Which is so good. That is such a good. So I guess that like, because like, in, indicative of they must have been using uh, like a different sound uh, directional space, and then we're kind of preserving certain directional spaces to do that, mm -hmm. so you don't get used to it. It's top tier all the way through. Some of the monster sounds are, are pretty good. I think that's like the squeaky demon baby thing was uh, very unsettling when I first encountered it in yeah. in the game. Obviously. Oh yeah, absolutely freaked me out. It's phenomenal. It's generally probably one of the best things about this game is the music it's one of the best things in the sequel as well is yeah. the music and so yeah that was cool. one of the first things that we we came up with when we played the, the sequel for sure we were like oh my god the sound is good in this game i think outside of that like gameplay wise i don't know if i really have why well, don't have any major criticism like actually it held up really well like yeah. you know for a tank controller from the ps1 era it, it was pretty smooth going like yeah, obviously there was the expectation you know aiming wasn't amazing it had a kind of auto aim and which kind of helped you um you were never really sure what you were shooting at but you, it gave you enough information to know when something was dead so that was okay uh, i never felt like we were really wasting ammo running around and stuff that was a fine the hit spaces didn't really bother me they were they were all just seemed like okay which was surprised me massively for that game because comparison to some of the old, other games we'd be played in a similar sort of time they which were much much worse um there are some really fun things like his like backwards skip 
awesome oh, yeah. awesome animation absolutely love that but you know what your gameplay holds up i it didn't perturb me it was totally playable it's a very good game it's a very there's a reason it's one of the highest probably one of the highest uh, rated games on the ps1 yeah and probably one of the most successful you know horror franchises you know that's yeah it's fantastic so i guess the only th last things that i was going to bring up uh okay. if you would so indulge me all the puzzles hold up pretty well and that piano one which is the one i would bring up as one of my iconic yeah moments, that's what that's the, the piano, one i was thinking of which i'll let you talk about because you solved the, p the piano puzzle sorry go on you talk about the piano because the piano was cool that was really i cool. great love puzzle. i love the piano puzzle i think that's, that it was a great puzzle and i was very dismayed when because in chat they, it was indicated to me that people really do not like the piano puzzle and so then I started, I searched after the stream and I came across like threads upon threads of people who absolutely hated that puzzle. And I could kind of understand why they didn't like the puzzle, but at the same time, because it's just, it's, it's a fun, it's a, it's a fun, it, it's a fun puzzle that a lot of people say that you need to have a musical theory for to understand like you need to you need to know uh stuff about a piano in order to solve the puzzle but i don't really think it's that's just not true it's, it's patently not true because it's not about uh like the names of keys or anything it's literally just about positions and colors and that's it that's all you need it's just, to... yeah it's just order and color once you've yeah. aligned the the colors which is the most obvious part of the puzzle it's yeah. just figuring out the order yeah and maybe figuring out which keys you're supposed to be. Yeah, which is next to which, right? Yeah. Well, I mean more because there's the there's the ones that've got like that kind of dead sound and the ones that right. actually make a right. sound. Right, right. So and you have to know it, which it ones very are, easy. are yeah, in it can play. Be very easy. Yeah, to to do to play the ones. Yeah. And not need not the other ones and yeah. like but I've had solved the puzzle but just playing the wrong keys, you know. Yeah. I, I thought you know it took a bit of time, took a bit of like you know, I cracked out some paper. I started to write it all down, which is the sign of a great puzzle. Which I think really... so too. Yeah, when you have to get yeah. out a pen and paper, that's when you're in puzzle territory. I, I enjoyed, I did enjoy the puzzles. A lot of them were fun. A lot of them were also a lot simpler than than I thought. Yeah, it's true. They were, they were... Especially towards the end. They, they, yeah, they had a great mask of trickery, but were actually simpler than they appeared. And you're right, towards the end, they'd be actually much more straightforward. Do you have any other moments? Because I probably have a couple. So my last one is uh, obviously the boss battle, the final boss battle, which is oh, which sure. I am very proud of finishing. And I'm sure as when we get to talk about Heart of Darkness next time, you will be very happy about to talk about your final boss battle. <laughs> yeah. But this is a boss battle that took maybe on the that penultimate stream. How many hours were I stuck on that? Probably a good couple of hours. It's a good couple of hours. And then it took like another half hour. Half an hour and the final stream. Um, yeah. You know, I had you playing the piano in the background, creating a new environment for us, which was fantastic. Uh, it really helped, actually. You know, we had things that we had no health. We had like, we could basically be one hit and we were going to die. We had set ourselves in a really bad position. No big ammo. We had lots of small ammo. So this is something which is annoying because we found out that apparently if you run out of ammo early, the game will trigger an end for you. But then we realized we had like 75 bullets of pistol ammo, which meant that we were going to be here for a while nailing this yeah. thing. Uh, and basically it seemed like nigh impossible for ages because um, its attack was a one hit kill and it seemed entirely unavoidable. Uh, and it really took a long time to figure out a strat. And to be fair, people in chat were giving me good advice. Uh, good advice shout that I didn't, I didn't put... Yeah, shout out to Base Boy. Sorted us out proper. I wasn't said it. putting... <laughs> Every minute. He said it. He was screaming at me. Just, just, just run in circles. <laughs> run in circles. And I was like, thought I was running in circles. But clearly <laughs> I wasn't running in circles. <laughs> uh, not at least in the way that I finally ended up doing which then basically shortened that trip down really easy and I fucking nailed that bastard and it was yeah. good, it was a good win, it was a solid win. Uh, it was like my friend uh, Gengen on the chat, he's saying he's often more proud of beating bosses in games than he is on things on his CV. And uh, <laughs> you know, in that moment, it really resonated with me. I was like, you know what, this might be my most proudest moment, at least over the last month at least. <laughs>
I really oh, like, actually, you know what? I also love just just to really rub it in. Yeah. I also really loved every time you struggled with uh, a section, and then I nailed it on my first go. Yeah, I mean, but that's pretty <laughs> typical. Most of the games we play, which is like, I was like, can you do it now? <laughs> You're very much like the bigger brother to help me finish games when we stream. <laughs> it's quite funny. It's a great game. It it's a fantastic is. game, and I encourage everyone who hasn't played it to give it a go. It's really, really rewarding experience. There is a reason it is considered a classic video game. Yep.